the breakdown, I mean, it made me, I mean, I went crazy, like meaning I started to tell people how I really felt about them. It was almost like I had vomit in the mouth. You know, I still work on myself, but I can tell you I have been great ever since. And I think a lot of that is attributed to the fact that I was able to let things out to everybody during that breakdown time, really feel like who I truly am and just fall into it. Hey family, I'm Katrina and you're doing life with Lakeisha on Living Her Truth. Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Wooder from LakeishaWooder.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week, you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Hey, Katrina girl. Hey, hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for saying yes to having this conversation with me today. Of course. I love the topic. <laughs> I'm excited about the topic. <laughs> but, uh, so I like to start off every conversation with just talking about how we'll come to know the person, I'm, the guest on my show, or the person that I'm talking to. So I want to do that um, for this episode as well. So you guys, so this is how I met Katrina because I, I, I kind of was looking like, what? Is this for real? <laughs> I got a random email, okay? Asking me, okay, so last year I had a speaking engagement and I was on a panel. And so I got this random email from this woman who was just like, you know, hey, um, I noticed that you wanted the speakers at this event and just wanted to know if you're still going because maybe we can connect and, you know, and I'm like, is this for real? Like, is this? <laughs> Is this a scammer? Like, is this no, a that I don't know. Like, what is going on? And so um, I responded to her. Uh, she asked me some, you know, a couple of questions about about the event, about how I was able to like land the the uh, the speaking gig and stuff like that. So I answered those questions because I'm always, you know, here to help. I'm not an information hoarder. Now some people may think that's a bad thing, but I, I'm not though. I'm like. If I got the scoop, I'm gonna give it to you. Because yeah. I want everybody to give me the scoop, you know? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, and so um, so yeah, so answer a couple of her questions and we started to, you know, communicate through email. And then we were just like, you know what, let's meet up at the event. And we did, we connected at, at the event, and it was so seamless, guys. Like you would have thought. Well, at least I think so from people on the outside looking in, you would have thought that we had known each other for like ever. And it wasn't even like, that wasn't even the case. I went to the speaking, to the speaking um, engagement, had my books, had my own table, had my books, was told at, about at this event that I was going to have, it was going to provide me with somebody who was going to work my table while I went and like mingle with, you know, the attendees I was there. That didn't happen. They, did, they didn't have anybody for me. And I was really banking on that. And guess who stepped in? My new file friend, Katrina. <laughs> when I tell you those PR, those PR skills came out, because she's a PR. When I, when I tell you those PR skills came out, I didn't have a lot of decor because I didn't travel with all that. But that woman, like, fixed up those books real good and put those books on display. Like, girl, let me help let me help you out. You go over there. You, you go talk to them and let me help you out. See, you know, I got books all standing up and stay displayed. Uh, I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> Because my thing is, with whatever you have, you just got to make it work. We're yeah. here. We're here. We're going to make this work. And mm -hmm. I just met this sister, and I know her bio, and I know she just spoke on there. Oh, no, no, no. We're going to make this work. She's going to sell some books. I'm a buy one. And then everybody's happy, right? And everybody's happy. Everybody's yeah. happy. Uh, like, if we don't support each other like that, to me, yeah. you can't expect it back, right? So absolutely, absolutely. And so I was just like, oh yeah, I like her, love her. It's like we definitely gonna keep in contact. And we have, but I was just so like I was just so grateful for that because I don't know if anybody else would have done that. You know, I would have, you know, because I would have helped somebody out if I was on, you know, in your shoes and saw somebody struggling. Because I was struggling, you guys, trying to. <laughs> Because if you see, if you met me at any event, whether or not, you know, I'm speaking or if I'm just a vendor, 
Like I talk to people. I'm not the one sit standing behind the table sitting down. I like to talk to people like, especially because I share my story of transitioning from, you know, victim to survivor sexual abuse. Like women have questions. Like we be having real, I be having real conversations with people. So it meant, it meant a lot for Katrina to step up and be like, I'm going to handle your book, go do what you got to do. And so I was able to like comfortably like mingle with the attendees. So thank you, exactly. little girl. Of I course. Appreciate. No, I was just grateful to meet you. I was like, oh my God, like this person's on the panel. How did she do it? I was grateful to be there. I'm all about gratitude. If I'm here and I'm in the environment, I'm going to take advantage of the moment and do what I can to make it special for whatever it is. Um, so no, I'm, I feel the same. I'm so yeah. glad we met. Love everything that you're doing. So. Thank you. Thank you so much, honey. And, and you do, because you even helped me out post that event too, as well, with just like PR tips and stuff like that. I'm telling you guys, it's all about building relationships. I mean, that's not, we already talked about building relationships, but this is just another example <laughs> of what it looks like to build um, relationships and it doesn't have to always be about you and we need to be able to accept the help because a lot of times we don't right a lot of times we don't and I feel like ego gets in the way mm -hmm. and that that ego is so big that I'm even I'm even dealing working with someone like that now it's so big it's like sometimes you just gotta let that ego go and go like it's okay if this person mm -hmm. came up with this idea and I want to execute it. It's okay. It's okay. Like yeah. what works the harm in that? I, I don't understand it. And I think that's part of a growth, you know, a growth mindset. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I agree. And you know, and that's a that's a great transition into what we're gonna be talking about today, which is self-worth. You know, we had a conversation where you share you know your story with me about self-worth and how just like oh my god yeah we definitely have to talk about that on the podcast because yeah I talk about self-awareness a lot but you know self-worth is a it's a part of that it's a part of that too because if you don't feel as though you're worthy if you don't feel as though you're worthy that's going to come across in everything you do how you show up in the world how you think what you say like all of that and Katrina has an amazing, has an amazing story. Do you mind telling us about your journey? Of course. So, um, you know, and to that point, I just want to say that what my journey showed me was that you can only hide it for so long. Where you don't feel worthy, you can only hide that for so long and it's going to eventually come out. So it's better for you to like recognize it and just move it. So for me, my journey started when I was 14 and, um, I grew up with my grandparents on my dad's side. So I, yeah, and my, my dad's side is Hispanic and my mom's side, African-American. So two totally different cultures, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm visiting, you know, my mom and seeing that culture. And then I'm visiting my, you know, Hispanic grandparents who very much, you know, spoke Spanish in the household and like Catholic and like, you know, traditional Hispanic uh, cultural views. Mm -hmm. So at 14, I'll say, I then decided to uh, live with my mom after having gone back and forth between families. And I didn't feel beautiful because I was at a school where, um, you know, either, either you had to look all, you were looking all one way or another. There wasn't a lot of people that looked like in the middle like me, or they thought I was Indian or, you know, whatever it was, right? which is why I love mixed dish. I'm like, oh my God, like this is exactly my church. <laughs> All those shows though, mixed dish fresh off the boat, like, oh my God, but that's a whole nother story. Okay. So, um, just not feeling pretty. So my grades were amazing, you know, straight A's, good grades. I was active and this is how I, this is again, back to how I covered it up, right? I was very active, amazing grades, participated in student council, like I was that girl, I was on top of it with everything. So that started in elementary, but moving to middle. Um, but I felt like I needed, you know, straight hair. I felt like um, my skin wasn't light enough. I felt, and this is, you know, even hanging around 
African Americans, which is what I gravitated toward. Like that's what I that that was my my group, my crew in middle school, all black. So it, it it's not like I wasn't seeing that too, but there was something about my own right, my own self worth that I just wasn't feeling worthy. So I felt like I had to manifest excellence in other ways. Okay, so fourteen, so we get to high school, and in high school, I'm like. You know, again, same thing, good grades in everything. I chore choreographed like several dance routines, cheerleader, basketball, track. I was involved in everything. Um, and again, this was covering everything up. I also got like best dress because I, I love to like, you know, all the fashion stuff. I was all up in it. So, you know, it's like this, this continued right all the way through high school now. I then, you know, apply for college. So now I'm in, you know, 11th grade, taking the test, applying for schools. So here's where my self-esteem elevated because I then got into Berkeley. I got into UC Davis. I got into Spelman, you know, so I, right? So I I'm like, around smart women. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, so I was like, oh, this is, give, that, that gave me the boost that I needed. I was like, oh, wow, this is, I'm going to do this. And first in my family to go to college. So that was another major, major milestone. So I, I then felt all this pressure, right? Because now you're carrying the load of like, I got to do well. Like, it doesn't matter where I'm going. Now I'm taking this doing well to a whole new level. Mm -hmm. um, moved across the country, decided to go to Spelman College. Uh, number one, liberal arts, all women, like I was all over it. HBCU, like loved it, the experience, everything. It just heightened my awareness. Mm -hmm. But uh, now we pivot back down because I'm around people who had better study habits, people who, um, you know, cause I grew up, it was just middle-class. Like it wasn't like, you know, but I, my study habits were non-existent cause A's came easy to me. Then I got to Spelman and it was like, no, like you need to figure out how to study. So, you know, I'm watching my roommate and she's studying well and other people around me. So I had to pick that up, but I had to work like three jobs in order to stay there. So I barely had food because my family, you know, we, they just, we couldn't afford all of that stuff. I had fighting for financial aid. So there's all these other issues that started coming into play. And then again, it goes back to my self-worth, right? I wasn't feeling pretty again because I wasn't around all the cool kids. Like, actually, I was around all the cool kids, but I was at work most of the time, you know? So it's, again, I, I just started my self-esteem. It hit me. So even though I was at this great school and should have been so happy, right? That wasn't the case. I wasn't. And it was manifesting out. And then my grades started dropping. Like, all of these things started happening. I started tearing up inside and I was losing my relationship with God. That was another thing is that I had such a strong relationship. And I think that's what carried me through elementary, high school, middle school carried me through. But when I got to college and started having fun, it just, it, it all that just went out the door. Right. And it shouldn't have, like, even though we had convocation and we, we had to go to Sunday mass and all that stuff, like I did all of that but I still didn't have the same connection. And I felt that. Um, so, you know, again, the dip. So I still dipped and it didn't feel good. So I decided, I finished, decided to come back home, get another degree, again, to build myself up, right? I'm doing, so you have to keep in mind, throughout this journey, I'm doing all these things to build myself up because I couldn't find, like, I'm like, what is missing? Like, why do I feel so insecure? Mm. So then my whole 20s, insecure the whole my whole 20s like I, I I look I look back on that time and I had a lot of fun but honey I mean the decisions I made were just based off insecurities like even getting that second degree because I saw people around me doing that so I just thought well let me just go do it and I did it mm -hmm. but still it's like maybe I could have made a better decision on where and what and when mm -hmm. um worked in fashion worked in tech and, and in tech and then that worked for you too. Cause you, when you went to college, that made you feel good. So of course you're going to go back to what made you feel good the last time. So I understand why you got the, the second degree. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. It's those feelings. And so I'm coming back to my family who 
me being the first, they don't didn't really understand, right? Because you're you're still developing an understanding of all the things I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So went back to school, you know, worked for a nonprofit, and that made me feel good because I was able to give back. So then that started my mentorship journey, right? And I started giving back way more and I started to feel good. So when people say like giving back makes you feel good, it's not so cliche. Like it's so true. I did it for years. And it, it, it does make you feel good. I mean, that was the spark. Sometimes that was just the only spark of my day. Mm -hmm. So went through all that stuff and you would think on the outside, everything looked great, but it just wasn't. And I just had all these internal conflicts and things that I was going through. Um, I, you know, kept myself focused, just focused on my career path, things I wanted to do. And again, back to self-worth super insecure in my 20s so when i hit my 30s you know now i'm getting married um you know which made me so super happy so that was like again lifting myself up doing these things to lift myself up mm -hmm. and and honestly it there was no pressure around that part of it the only pressure was of course me running into something committed where like i think i mentioned earlier on like my dad wasn't really around so I never got to really view from my dad and I'm not blaming him because, you know, now I, I mean, I've went to therapy and all this stuff and I realized what I could have been viewing instead of him, which was my grandparents, but, you know, saw my dad and, um, we, uh, didn't have a relationship. And I think sometimes when you have, like you're missing a parent, I do think there's something about that, that you're just missing. They're naturally there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're just missing that balance. So my mom, super strong. Grandmother, super strong. You know, like I never had a problem. Grandparents on both sides, actually. Strong, gave me that, like balanced. I had that. But there was still something missing there. So when I, when I met Richard, he, to me, was the combination of both grandparents. And I just, I just fell in love. I'm like, oh my God, like this is, this is it. This is the person. I don't know if he likes me, but this is the person. Okay. <laughs> so we went through that, you know, and again, self-worth elevates, but then something happened after I had my first child where, um, I had a breakdown mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I don't even want to start crying. Oh my God, this is crazy. Oh, don't, don't, don't. But both gonna be crying, girl. I know. Oh God. But I know it was nothing but God. Because all that self-worth, all those issues and insecurities that I went through and had been fighting finally just came to the forefront and I broke down. Like I thought I was going crazy. And part of that was postpartum with my kid. I, you know, I read up on it and I, I do believe that. I also visited a counselor at church and they told me part of that too. And like things that are symptomatic and things to watch for, um, got back tight with God so that I could really establish that strength that I needed. Mm -hmm. And the breakdown, I mean, it made me, I mean, I went crazy, like meaning I started to tell people how I really felt about them. It was almost like I had vomit in the mouth and just started just coming up with all this stuff. This is why I say it was nothing wow. but the I mean, I hear women go through that and never thought I would have been the one. I have to say, and I've never shared this, <laughs> except for with my immediate family knows, but mm -hmm. I, I, I entered myself into a mental facility because I thought that I was going crazy and no one ever was like, you're fine. You're fine. I'm like, I'm not fine. I'm always the strong one. I'm always, like I told you, I always got everything together. I wasn't fine. I went to this mental hospital. Let me tell you what happened. I, I told my husband to drive me. He thought I, he's like, what's happening? He just was okay. Cause he followed what I wanted to do. He was very understanding. He asked me if he needed to stay. I said, just let me I'm just going to go. I need to stay the night here. I'm, I'm, something is wrong with my head. So, uh, there's a priest that comes in to the mental hospital. The priest came in and the priest was like, um, you know, hun, this is just your journey. I don't believe that there's anything wrong with you after speaking to you. 
I just want to pray with you. Let's talk about some of the things that are coming up for you. And, and let's continue your journey with God and talk about how you can do that. For me, that worked for me. Everybody had their own, you know, spiritual journey. That worked for me. We talked about it. I'm the type of person that likes to write things down. I wrote it down and I just stuck to the plan. The next morning I left and I'm telling you, first of all, I'd say we got our bill because I was really worried about that. We got a bill maybe three weeks later. Mm -hmm. Bill, nothing. Um, it was zeroed out. Like it was almost like an angel had just was like, girl, you fine. I mean, the bill was probably like $1,500 that we didn't have at the time to, to just give like that. So it, it was wiped out. I still don't know to this girl, day. Don't make me cry. I, don't not make me cry. I, oh my God. So I'm telling you, it's very, it's very emotional. And this is why I know there's something greater, whatever it is, there's something greater. And I strongly believe it. Um, craziness, right? So, so yeah. So from there again, path to self-worth, um, I have been, you know, I still work on myself, but I can tell you, I have been great ever since. And I think a lot of that is attributed to the fact that I was able to let things out to everybody during that breakdown time, really feel like who I truly am and just fall into it and just have no, not trying to be this wife for, for Richard, not trying to be this perfect mom, not trying to be like what I had done my entire life, which I still did things I love, but still there was this facade. There was some kind of weird facade I had. I let, as soon as I let all that go, honey, it's been an upward hill. Even when I'm broke, I'm fine. I'm happy. Like, it's just, it's because you can't, you can, that's why I said for self-worth, as far as that's concerned, you can only hold stuff in and have a facade for so long. It's going to come out at some point. So it's better that you just go, you know what? You address issues as they come up because then you become who you truly are faster. And then you, you start to go, wow, I, who I am, wow, who I was created to be like, this works. And you just start to groove. Like, I can't say that enough. Um, so yeah, that, I think that breakdown was very pivotal for me in oh. step self-worth so oh mg i didn't even I, I didn't even know all of that because i because you know we talked about your journey um a little bit before to discuss where we're going to ask actually talk about here on the podcast but i didn't know that you checked yourself into um a mental hospital that is so brave of you to do if, if that's not because, you know, I talk about all the time, ask for help, ask for help, ask for help. You know, I'm always, you know, saying, telling yeah. us to ask for help. That's asking for help on a whole new nother level. Because yeah. who would, like, check themselves into a mental hospital like that? You know, um, not Kelly Rowland, uh, the other girl from Michelle. From oh, Michelle. Kyle, you know, she checked herself into the mental hospital. Um, and I think she got a little bit of slack for for that and i was just like i think that's brave like i yeah. applaud her for for doing that like you can't tell people to get help and then when they do it you i mean talk bad about them i mean like don't do that so i just think that's oh my god i think that's so amazing and i had a you know in a previous episode we talked about uh postpartum we talked about mental illness in the previous episode and she talked about how her mom's mental illness, like there was history of mental illness in the family, but she feels as though that in her opinion, her mom's mental illness was triggered by postpartum depression. See, I'm telling you that is so real. It's real. Yes. It's real. And it's real. I think not enough moms address it because the areas I've lived in, like, you know, Pasadena, Santa Clarita, like we're, we're all suburbs or nice areas. And when you meet a group of moms, like fortunately for me in Pasadena, I had a group of real moms. I mean, all different races, cultures, real with who they were. And if something was wrong, we could say it, but that was, that wasn't common. You would meet moms that everything was fine. Just like the fifties, right? Everything's okay. And 
it's like it's if it's not okay I, i'm such an advocate especially after having gone through that and put my family through what i put them through i'm such an advocate for taking care of yourself yeah because once you do that your self-worth it just increases and it heightens and mm -hmm. you start to realize these things as you continue to move forward and yes with mm -hmm. postpartum not enough moms new moms do that i've talked to so many and they wonder why and i'm like girl maybe you just need a break don't feel like you need to be on all the time it's all good yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah absolutely man that's just that's just right on time because I, I, you know, had that same conversation in a previous episode and she was saying too that her uh, situation was unique because she too ended up getting help from, from the church, from a pastor in the church. She ended up getting help for, for herself and then how, you know, you was able to get help from a priest in the, you know, in the mental hospital. So it's just like, man, so it's like there's no unique story if you will, because there's somebody else who have gone through what it is that you've gone through, right? Because in the last, what, couple of episodes of the podcast, you've heard two women say the exact same thing. Our, our stories are, are not unique. They're alike in so many, so many different ways. And I just want to like, give you some kudos and just love on you for, for doing that and having the heart to, to do that because you was going through a lot of changes in your life. You went through Man. a lot of changes and those life changes could have, you know, did the, the, the downward spiral of your self-worth, you know, growing up with your, first off, you grew up with your grandparents on your daddy's side. Like how often does that even happen <laughs> in the African-American community? First off, do we even know our daddy? Let alone <laughs> living with his parents. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm just, okay. That was a little, that was a little tangent, but yeah, y'all watching the, the video on Facebook. That's why I was looking like that. Like, really? Like, if this, was, like, that is so, <laughs> that is so awesome. But, um, yeah, no, I was just saying that, uh, with all of the, the life changes that you was going through, you know, just trying to find yourself at each season and not really knowing, um, who you are, because you're right. When there's a parent missing, you know, it's something missing in you. I mean, when you grow up with one parent and not the other, even if you have like a step parent in the household, yes. that's not last to parent not being there, that still leaves a hole in you. And that's exactly it. And especially if you don't, I mean, my dad was in the Marines at the time. And so mm -hmm. he's away and you don't have that connection. Yeah. Like pictures can only do so much. And back then, like there were no cell phones. So it was like me growing up and like just having to, you know, send pictures to my dad or when he came home, experience specific moments. And then my dad, there's a whole nother story, but he went through his own journey as well. Mm -hmm. And my parents, I didn't mention this, but they were young. They were 15 when they had me. Mm -hmm. So that's another side to the story. It's like, you know, they're both very young. Mm -hmm. So they have a whole life too. Can you imagine being a baby, having a baby? No. I, yeah. So that's a whole nother dynamic as well. So it's like, you know, I'm fortunate that now we're all close. My dad is just like amazing relationship with the Lord. My mom, we're really tight. Like she's like my best friend, like my sister, everybody's cool. Yeah. And it took for me to get my own and not blame everybody for everything. And that's why I said, I don't, I don't blame my dad for his situation. I don't no blame. It's just, where am I at? And like, how can I take what I know and develop myself into what I want to be versus blaming continuously different people in the family, what person did, you got to get out of that. You got to get out of the blame. Game. Even though you, but even though you didn't blame, I love the fact that you still told everybody how you felt and got it off your chest while you was in the mental hospital. Because I, it's a way to do that. It's a way to speak your mind without blaming. And I love the fact that you got that toxicity out of you. I did. And and honey, I lost, I mean, I lost relationships with friends. I bet. I, I lost, you know, even like, I, I remember 
someone in my family like going, gosh, I didn't know you felt that way. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but I have to express this to you. This is how I feel. Like, I mean, but then it, it caused a tighter bond because I was able to just say how I felt and not cover things up. And now the relationship then strengthens because mm-hmm. they know where you're coming from and why. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the ones that went away, I found that they didn't need to be there. To be honest, mm-hmm. they weren't good friends and didn't need to be there. It wasn't anything I said. It was just, oh, this is when, you know, again, retrospect, right? I look back and I'm like, wow, why was I friends with that person? Mm -hmm. Well, you know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. there's also that side of it too. And I think that's part of self-discovery and self-worth as well, because you know how they say you are like the five people you hang around, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you start to look at that and go, well, who am I hanging around? (laughs) You know? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why I talk about self-awareness, you know, as a way to help people to uh, embrace their purpose, because once you have embraced purpose and you start to operate, you know, from a place of a place of purpose, you have no other choice but to evaluate all areas of your life. And that's including your relationships, right? Because to operate in purpose, it's not just you know, me coming on here, I'm gonna use myself as an example. It's not just me coming on here and just talking and sharing my story with people or how I survived sexual abuse or coming up here and just talking to you. But it's also about the relationships I have outside of the podcast. It's also, you know, how I, you know, communicate with my husband. You know, it's, it's also about my, my spiritual life, right? Like purpose needs to affect every area of your life. Exactly. My, my mental health, my finances, how I take care of, of my body. If you, you know, you, you can't change your thinking, but not change your actions. Exactly. It goes hand in hand. Exactly. It goes hand in hand. It goes hand in hand. And I think a lot of us, we, there's a friction there because we don't want to change. Mm-hmm. And because change means letting go of people. And we, you know, we, we, we stick tied to people for longer than what we need to, because some people are in our our lives for a reason. I mean, for a season and that's completely okay. You know, because once you healed, it's kind of hard to, you know, still hang around negative people. Exactly. And you found myself like, you know, pretty much alone and rolling solo for a while, which was actually fine for me because I needed to go through that so that I could cleanse. And then, okay, now the, you know, the path's clear. Now, who do I want to keep in my circle? Right. That became important. So. Yeah. And I also love the fact too, that the priest told you, maybe there's nothing wrong with you. This is just your journey and you need to you need to like go through this because this is a part of the journey. I think that is so key, right? Because you didn't know what was going on with you. You thought you was literally losing your mind, right? Exactly. Because there are people out there that have a mental illness where there's a chemical imbalance in the brain. So you didn't know what was going on, but the fact that he was able to recognize that and recognize the fact that this is just your journey that you just need to go through, but I'm gonna hold your hand and we are gonna walk through this together. We're going to walk through this together. Let's set a plan that works for you and I. Mm-hmm. And then I can tell you, like, this will probably work or this might not work. He, they prescribed me some medication. I took none of the medication. Mm. For me, I felt like this was a spiritual walk and I wanted to test that first. So I was like, let me just see if just my relationship with the Lord and also being diligent in a plan will work. And mm-hmm. it worked. I didn't need any medication or anything that they prescribed me because I was like, I just knew and something in me was like, you don't even need all that. Just, just get right. Just get right. And just be, be cool. And like, do everything you say you're going to do and mm-hmm. follow. You need to see a therapist, go see a therapist. Like it's okay. And that's exactly what I did. Yeah, absolutely. And so let's, I mean, if, if you listening to this and you're on medications, we're not saying to stop your medication. Right. 
illness, right? Because there are yeah. literally illnesses out there that causes people to have to take medication. That's um, right. I, I uh, had a podcast episode with Takia and she shares her story of overcoming, you know, suicidal thoughts. And she takes medication for her, de- for her depression because of the, you know, there's an imbalance there. So if, if, if that's you, please continue to, to take your, to take your medications. But that's not everybody's story in everybody's case, right? Just because you're, you're not on medication doesn't mean that there's not, <laughs> No, you know, a lack of mental health there that you nope. that you need to strengthen. You know, exactly, exactly. It's whatever. That's why, and that's why I keep stressing. It's whatever works for you. Mm-hmm. It's to work for you, and however you can con- move throughout the day and continue on and continue on within your purpose, whatever that is for you, that's what you have to do. Mm, and I encourage you to to do that and, and get the help that you need. Hey, if Katrinica to, can, you know, check herself into a mental hospital, you can call up a couple of therapists and ask them what the rates are. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Come on, come on. If she's, if she's able to do that, you guys can definitely, uh, can definitely do that too. You know, I also too love the fact that he was just like, let me not try to be the perfect mom or and just like the wife, right? You literally had to separate yourself and, and figure out who is Katrina. I love that. I love that. Like, what would you tell somebody else who's literally trying to figure that out and try not to base their self-worth off of their, their children and their husband and their careers? I would say, you know, stay clear on your own path. Mm-hmm. And some, and also, you know, what work, what I've seen is like taking 30 days. I love the 30 day barometer to mm-hmm. just kind of be cool off like social media, mm-hmm. like, you know, different things yeah. that get away distractions. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I would say stay clear and stay on your path and don't get distracted. And if you can just for thir- go like, okay, for 30 days, I'm going to just do X, whatever it is. If it's professional, then you go, okay, for 30 days, if I'm, let's say I have to post on social media, I'll only do that and I'll jump right off and stay focused on other things that I need to be productive. Then do that for 30 days. Or if it's like, oh, I need to, you know, strengthen my relationship with my spouse. Okay. Then for 30 days, figure out what it is you need to do with your spouse, whether it's more dates, you know, um, help being more helpful, more supportive, focus and do that because then what's going to come out of it, the end result is that you're going to develop an appreciation for whatever that is, professional, personal, whatever. And then you're going to continue on in that way. You're not, that's not going to just stop because you've been doing it now for 30 days. So you've now developed some form of a habit and there's going to be something that comes out of it that you like. So I, I say, especially to my millennials, like I told you, the 20 is most fantastic, but most difficult, right, for me. So it's like, I had so much fun, but oh my gosh, you're, you're torn inside. And I hear it from all these people in their 20s, like nobody knows what they're doing. You think you know everything, right? So especially for that group, I'd say stick to your path and stop looking around. Stop looking at what everybody else is doing and just hone in. If you can do that for 30 days, Mm -hmm. the rest of the time, you're just going to develop great habits for the rest of your life. You know what? I love that. You know, doing May, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And I've had, you know, several conversations with women, brave women who have shared their testimonies of overcoming some type of trauma in their life, right? Since we're talking about self-work, in your opinion, how do we get to the point where we believe that we're good people and we're deserving of having happiness. Does that make sense? How do we yes. get to the point where we believe that we are deserving of having good things and having good things happen to us after experiencing, you know, such a traumatic experience? Because that was trauma. Would you, your story, like what you just described, that's trauma, right? Exactly. I think, you know, the thing that sets, first of all, you have to have continuous and unwavering faith in everything. You have to just, you have to own it. It's almost like you have to wake up in the morning 
whether it's meditation, prayer, looking at an affirmation, listening to a positive podcast, whatever you have to do to get that start of your day to just bridge it with faith, mm -hmm. you start off with that. Mm -hmm. And then all these traumatic experience, like even I'm thinking back when I went through that and how difficult that time was, mm -hmm. I was alone and because it feels lonely, right? You went through something, you feel lonely. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh my God. And then you think, you know, you're insecure. Everybody's looking at me like, and, and honestly, people have gone through their own things. So no one is really looking at you that hard or, or they care, but you know what I'm saying. I won't say yeah. they don't care. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the, it starts with your faith. You have to build that first because I feel like once you have a foundation of faith, everything else you do is going to be, you're not even going to be worried whether it's a disappointment or something else happens because that's going to start to build your trust as well. Your trust in yourself, mm -hmm. your trust in everything you do with other people. Mm -hmm. So that starts to build from faith. So you have to have a strong foundation of faith and you have to build a practice that incorporates faith every single day. I still do that. You, you ha it's continuous, right? For me, it's prayer and meditation. Mm -hmm. And actually during my workout, there's things I'm talking out in my head, but I'm working out. And then once, you know, I'm like trying to do this and kickboxing and all that stuff. And then it all comes out and I'm like, oh my God, that was such a great workout. Cause I got it all out mentally, mm -hmm. you, you know, whatever it is for you, but develop a habit of mm -hmm. starting to get faith mm -hmm. and then move on from there mm -hmm. and continuous support, right? You need a strong support system. That to me would be the second thing. If I had like great friends, great family who just were understanding and I had some that weren't so understanding. The ones that weren't, weren't so understanding, they could stay over there. The ones that are, those are the ones you go to. And, and not saying abuse those relationships and continue, right. continue, continue. But what I am saying is there's a balance there, right? When you need to let something out, let, let it out. Talk to someone, therapist, family, friend, Whoever that confidant is, God, if it's just you being alone and praying and praying really hard, do that. But you got to develop a consistent pattern of whatever that is going to be for you and be consistent. So that's what I would say. You know what? I love that. And the, the flip side of, of, or not even a flip side, but a benefit of being consistent and developing consistent, positive patterns like that is that. That's a good indication when you when you're the patterns that you're doing to you know keep your mental health good. If they're no longer working, that can be an indicator that you need additional help. And the rate and the reason why I say that is because you know my brother was killed in October 2018, so there was a, a lot of things that we needed to deal with you know on the, on the back end because it was it was suddenly it wasn't something that we expected it was suddenly it was sudden. And, you know, I'm the oldest, so I had to, to stay strong. And that affected me. Now, I did take time. Once everything kind of like slowed down, you know, for a little bit, I did take the time, you know, to really like kind of process my emotions, if you will. I took a month to like process my emotions. But what I didn't realize was that it took, it, you know, I needed to, to, to take more time than that. So the first like five or six months of 2019, I was just in this funk. And my my go-to routines, even the prayer and meditation, I'm gonna be 100 with you guys. Yeah. Even with the prayer and meditation, it wasn't working. And because my my normal go-to, because I created these habits and I created these patterns that always helped me to bounce back, because it wasn't working, I was like. I need to do something different. I need to pivot, I need to shift, right? Because my normal routine is not working. And that is completely okay. If you find yourself in that position, it is completely okay, you know? And I, at that time, I'm just like, you know what? I need to go back to, to therapy. I chose to go back to therapy and that helped me out so, so much. And then I, you know, I started to, clean up my diet. I found a, a detox, a herbal detox, 
where it cleaned out my system. And you guys, believe it or not, I'm still trying to, I'm still working to get him on the podcast. Okay, guys. So if y'all know Dr. Bobby Price, I'm gonna need y'all to hit him up on email <laughs> and say that you want him to be on the Living Her Truth podcast. Because <laughs> his um his detox helped me out too, because it cleaned out my system, right? So I think it was just a, a combination of different things. Cause I had to think outside of what was normal for me. I had to think outside of my comfort zone. I had to think and do things differently. And because I was able to do that, I was able to break the mold and get back on track, you know, and uh, go to the conference. And, you know, and this happened right before we met. Like I wow. went through this right before we met at that, you know, at that conference where I was speaking. So it was just, cause I was just, I was not in the right headspace. I did nothing. I, I think having that speaking gig is probably what kept me in the game. Cause it, I, I could have like easily just let AST go, but because I already signed the contract and I, you know, I, I'm, you know, I keep up with my commitments. I committed to be at this, at this conference. I was like, I gotta do something different because I need yeah. to be on my A game. Cause I know I'm gonna have a woman that's gonna come up to me and, and share with me. And I need to be in my best, in the best version of myself. So that was my long way of saying having patterns and, and good habits and routine is good because that's, it can be used as a great indicator of when you need to pivot and shift and do something different. And I love that you're saying that just to, you know, piggyback on that because mm -hmm. it changes with the seasons of your life. Yes. It changes with the seasons of your life. So I might have worked out like a maniac before and that wasn't working for me, yeah. but I was, like, why isn't this working for me? And then once I changed just what it's almost exactly what you said, once I changed my diet and started watching what I was putting in my body, it was a game changer. Yeah. And, so, and it, it affects your mental. I actually just posted just some post where I said fit body equals fit mind. And it's so I live that I, I was an athlete. I was a dancer. So I live that life. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, if you're more fit and you're more also conscious of what you're putting in your body, that impacts your mind. So yeah. And that's going to change with every season. You're going to go through different things through different seasons of your life. And, and yeah. I love thing about that, being aware of that and being able to go, okay, I need to shift now because this is not working. You got to do that sometimes and that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's completely okay. And I'm learning that too, even, you know, through uh, therapy, I'm, you know, I'm learning that even more so, you know, I knew that, but we yeah. have worked so well for so long, yeah. you know, and it's no longer working. I ain't gonna lie, I was in denial for a little bit that it wasn't mm -hmm. working. Cause I'm like, yeah. okay, I'm not trying hard enough. And it's mm -hmm. just like, no key. You just need to do something different. Right. And that doesn't mean that I just stopped with the, with the routine because I still have a routine. I still have those, those good habits. You know, I just like added something onto it, just pivot and just shift it. Exactly. That's it. That's exactly. it. Cause I was in a new season, in a new season right. of my life. So, yep. so yeah, but praying, this was amazing. I know Thank this is so much. Great. I can't believe I almost cried. I'm like, oh my god. Well, you know, I tend to bring bring the best out of people. I tend to bring the kids <laughs> out of people. <laughs> like, am I on Oprah? Like, what is happening right now? Oh my god. Like, really? But, yeah. not. but no, no, but thank you so much. I'm, I'm gonna say thank you for for the listener who's not gonna say thank you. I'm gonna say thank you for her for sharing that because I know somebody is going to need to hear that and that's going to fall on somebody and it's going to release them and it's going to be the thing that they need to hear for them to pick up the phone and make that phone call because somebody has been battling it and too afraid to make the phone call because they're scared that somebody's going to judge them or say something. Maybe they're even scared that their kids are going to be taken away from them. I don't know, but I just that pray that this, your story it's the confirmation that they need to get the help that they need. Yes, me too. You know, the help is different from what their inner circle is used to, you know? Exactly. Uh, you got to see what works, right? You got to try uh, something new if you want new results. Uh, we always say that. So reach yeah. and go for what you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Whew. But this was a great conversation. But before I let you go. Okay. 
just two uh two more two more questions so give us a book or audible recommendation because you know i'm addicted to audible give us a book or audible uh recommendation that you have re either read or listened to that has impacted your life in a positive way um i like the memo uh it's a book by i want to say i want to say her name is minda hart Nina and or nina minda m-i-n-d-a Okay. Okay. I'm definitely gonna have to check check that one out. Yeah. Okay, so last question: When describing the meaning of living your truth, okay, what is your third word when you hear these two words put together? All right. Those words are self awareness, purpose, and self love. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Self love. I feel like self awareness is is different from self love because. Self-awareness to me is you're aware of like things that you do and, and how you're impacting others and you're aware of feelings and compassion. But self-love is what brings us to what we talked about, self-worth. Yeah, I love that. That's a that's a great combination. And you know, self-love also um, helps you to, again, affect every area of your life. Katrina, thank you so much, girlfriend. Thank, thank you so much.